Hello, everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Transatlantic Rebels podcast. My name is Jessel, and this week we've got a very special guest. Her name is Rita Morar, and she's here, better late than never, to talk about Kanye West. a very special guest as I mentioned her name is Rita Morar and we are talking about Kanye West's 2005 album Late Registration so Rita what are your memories of this album I think the first memory I had of this album when it came out I remember oh my gosh so many collaborations and not only the collaborations each song has its own entity of what they bring to the audience and the feelings and no, no two song is the same on this album, you know, and for me, that's just genius really. And this is why it's one of my favorite albums. And, um, sorry, before we carry on, I must say that me and Rita are here live in person. Oh yes. I got this nice new microphone, which means that I can actually record with <laughs> other people, not just through the internet. <laughs> So if it's a bit echoey or it's a bit different to normal, then don't worry. Better late than never. Indeed. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, Kanye West, this was his sophomore album after the college dropout. Now, did you pick up the college dropout when it came out? No, I didn't. <gasps> I know. I wasn't. Uh, you know, when, when I listen to songs and then they t- intrigue me, that's when um, I get the album. But at, back at that time, we didn't have, like, streaming like Spotify and so forth. So for me, as I knew, there were two, three songs that I liked. So it was the songs from Late Registration that got you, not College Dropout? No. Wow. So not Through the Wire or anything? Through the Wire, I loved. All Falls Down. No, yeah, All Falls Down is amazing, I must say. Um, And uh, uh, Through the Wire, but I wasn't really... I am into my hip-hop. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't really drawn to Kanye at that time. But when late registration hit, that's when I thought, wow. Well, it's worth remembering, Kanye was really different to everything yeah, that came before him. Definitely. Um, I mean, on College Dropout, he was doing the whole backpack rapper thing, yeah. but in a commercial way. Yeah. He'd obviously been producing for everyone. And it, he was a tough sell for a lot mm. of people. That's why mm. hardly anyone signed him. You know, mm. it was only Rock that actually signed him yeah. as a rapper. So yeah. many labels passed on him. Yeah. So... Although on late registration, it might have seemed like a no-brainer, he was a risk for, yeah. for labels. Yeah. So a lot of people didn't pick up on him until late registration came out in, mm. in certain ways. So you're probably not alone there. So what were the songs that actually drew you in? Crack music. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say no, Gold Digger. No. Well, the Gold Digger was the first one I heard. Um, sorry, I can't remember actually which one I heard first, but Gold Digger did stand out for me. But I actually heard crack music somewhere. I can't remember where. But because it had the game on that track as well, and just the way that the chorus comes in in and out of the track, it's it's quite strong in itself. Mm. So for me, it's still crack music is one of my gym tracks. Or when I'm feeling on, you know, I need some power, just go and listen (laughs) to crack music. You know, so yeah. Crack music. The breakdown on crack music is crazy. Yeah, You, you don't expect that. No. to happen but yeah that's what it's about and part of that is because he teamed up with a producer called john bryan okay so john bryan had done previous work with uh, fiona apple and wow. uh, i think he'd actually done porter's heads album as well so i don't know if you're a fan of trip hop from like the mid 90s uh, fiona so. apple here and there so um well the trip hop scene was more like massive attack tricky mm. bjork was a bit of it and um, yeah but we actually talk about John Bryan on the Fiona Apple podcast oh, that we really? did um, a little while back, mm-hmm. and uh, and so he he tends to use a lot of strings and stuff like that as well. Like and and in, he does cinema scores. So he did Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh, nice! Just one yeah. of my favorite films from this century. Yeah. And so Kanye watched that film. Was like, wow, who did the strings? Blah blah blah. And um, he was also a Fiona Apple fan. So they kind of hooked up. 
And I think Kanye had basically done quite a bit of the album. He'd done 75% of it. And then he got John Bryan in. Mm. And together they teamed up and co-produced it. Mm. And it completely changed. Yeah. So there are so many different um, musical elements that John Bryan brought to this album. Okay. And um, yeah, it's just, it's such a step up from the college dropout in so many ways because it makes it seem quite basic in, in certain mm. ways, even though mm. it's not a basic album at all. Mm. But I think the thing was, is basically he had like one violinist for the college dropout <laughs> and he didn't have the budget. And then once he had the budget for late registration, that's when he got an orchestra yeah, and everything yeah, like that. So yeah. I think he spent $2 million that's on this amazing. album. amazing, gosh, to put that on wow. an album. But with, with late registration, this is what it is, Jess, so that he's got this orchestra and then the elements that put all the emotions into him. me as a singer songwriter you know, for me that 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 comes together so this is why i'm drawn to this album very yeah. much still to this day and and this is an album about excess in a yes. lot of ways um yes. you've got tracks that go on for like seven minutes and stuff <laughs> they like they do that. actually and, yeah and just so many different guest stars and the production on it is so ornate at times mm. it's just yeah it's it's really amazing uh, I'm going to make a big shout here. I think this might be Kanye West's best album that he's ever done to this day. Hands down. I yeah? would say that. Yeah. So it's not a controversial shout? No, I don't think so. So why do you think that then? Uh, well, so it, I think for me, late registration will always stick out regardless of, you know, it's where the artist is at their moment in time. And I feel that with late registration, Kanye must have learned so much from his first album, how to, in terms of sound, in terms of his rapping, the flow of the, the songs. So it's him listening to himself to make it better, if that makes any sense. And for me, I think he, he learned that way as an artist and developed and, and progressed, I guess. Well, that's a great point. And, and yeah. his, I mean, that was one of the points I was going to talk about. His rapping steps up yeah. massively on this album. Yeah, but definitely. He's always been one, even to this day, who has kind of clunky wordplay and mm. it's quite it's kind of like almost kind of old school 80s rapping yeah. at times like he's yeah. not the most polished rapper no, even yeah. though he works with a lot of ghostwriters and co-writers and stuff like that um but this one when i was listening to it after with a fresh set of ears because i hadn't bumped it for like a good year or two maybe i was like damn is that he actually spits pretty hard on yeah. a lot of these songs mm-hmm. so I was, and then i started looking through the credits so i was like okay there's not many co-writers here. he actually <laughs> no, seems to have written actually, quite yeah. a fair bit of it with um gold digger actually you know you're talking about the rapping that's actually when if i go karaoke with my friends um <laughs> uh, you wouldn't expect this but gold digger is always the one for me and my husband because i don't sing because everyone's like oh you don't want to be singing you want to be rapping so <laughs> as i'm into my hip-hop gold digger always is the best <laughs> to come out so yeah yeah um just for the listeners rita is an amazing <laughs> singer just in case you didn't know she Thank wasn't you. just being self-deprecating no. <laughs> um no but she's definitely a great singer so that's why her friends are like banning her from karaoke <laughs> singing they don't want her to waste that gold. So i want to be an mc <laughs> but yeah they just won't have it they said no you just stick to the singing <laughs> all right i'll stick to the karaoke with the mc okay so i tell you what let's start going through the album yeah sure in little chunks we probably won't touch every single track um but but there's because there's just so many of them but um if we start off then uh i mean you got the intro but then uh, let's go into Heard and Say. Yeah. Now, um, was it a surprise for you to hear Adam Levine from uh, Maroon 5 yes, on this song? totally. This song is a morning track for me. You know, when you're waking up and you just want to just ease into the day, even what Adam's singing, you know, like the words, they, they, it touches you. It's like, just, just let it be. You know, we, we've got to try. So for me, having Adam on there with that motion, it was just... It was, icing on the cake the cherry on the cake as you say and um i don't know i mean at the time there's a lot of kind of there's a lot of cynicism around what kanye west does he's mm. he's a lot more calculated than he seems so a lot of people are like okay he's got this guy in to target the white market and there's a lot of things with this album actually i remember he actually um he started talking about his gay cousin and how he had difficulty and then he accepted it. And this is in the week of promo leading up to the album. Oh, okay. Con- uh, yeah, controversial. Yeah, and it was very yeah. controversial and it yeah. turned some people away, but it gained yeah. a lot of others. Yes, yeah. And and quite a few of us were like, that's great. It's great, you know, to, to sort of take a, you know, admit that he was a homophobe who's now changed mm. into someone else. Mm. But 
is he being a bit cynical and getting the yeah. you know the kind of quote unquote gay votes kind of thing yeah. or not vote but to you know draw what I mean them in. yeah to draw yeah. them in mm. and um and then that was around the time he he said George Bush doesn't care about black people all that kind of stuff which yeah. is, that was like a heartfelt yeah thing, but, yeah yeah but I heard him say like he he immediately kicks off the album on, on quite a political slant and mm-hmm. um, that's quite a risk it was a risk at that time you know as you mentioned earlier on that not many artists were trading that way in terms of just you know, the views putting the at the views commercially so yeah. and he yeah. has so many different views on this album like mm. political mm, views yeah. and, okay there are kind of like fun ones and stuff like that but even something like gold digger yeah I mean, actually i'm getting ahead let's come back come yeah, back, come yeah back, come okay, back. okay so i heard him say um have you ever seen the video for this no so now it's really bizarre I you haven't can't actually you can't get the video on youtube anymore. how come so i have no idea the original video was produced by Michelle Gondry, who mm. is the director of Eternal Sunshine and the Spotless Mind. Oh. And he actually comes back to play drums on one of the tracks later on, yeah. bizarrely enough. Yeah. Um, so he did this. It was really cool. It was set in Macy's in New York. So Adam Levine is the security guard. He lets in Kanye and a couple of kids, and they have fun in the store at night when it's closed. Then that's gone, that version. So I had to hunt it down on like <laughs> Vimeo or something. I and think then I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. But then, and then there's another version, which is, um, I think it's like a, a, a illustrated version. The whole thing is illustrated, which is kind of, I didn't, I never really liked that. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah, I heard him say like, you're right. It's kind of like a morning track. It's easing into the album. Easing into it. Just getting into the flow of it. Yeah. You know, the listener doesn't, they, then they don't know what they're expecting, basically. I didn't know what I was expecting. It wasn't one of those uh, where I was flipping from track to track. I thought I always give that album um, a good listen in terms of follow it through, how the artist wants the listener to hear it. Yeah. And I think immediately it grabbed me the musical elements from it because mm. you got that lovely lilting Little piano. piano. <laughs> yes, yeah. And then, but even the way that it breaks down at the yeah. end. Yeah. Um, then immediately John Bryan, those are kind of elements that, yeah. you know, those are the things that he's known for. Mm. So you're hearing these kind of, all these things coming in in track like an one, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even the, the, the beat is quite hard, though. Yeah, if it you, is. Yeah, you crank yeah. it up yeah. in the bass, and then you've got this little little piano, like toy piano playing. Yeah. It, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's craziness of a sound, yeah, yeah, that you wouldn't expect to put in a, a track together. It's really mm. subtle as well, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, it's so subtle. Mm. Um, and it, it kicks off the album on a lovely note. It's it's also catchy as well. I mean, yeah. the chorus is catchy, yeah, yeah. but it's got everything. It's got political statements. Yeah. It's got a beautiful beat. It's got a mm. catchy chorus. Yeah. It's got wonderful melody, music. Yeah, yeah mm. everything, all mm. that. And then we get to <laughs> there we go straight into it. Touch the sky. <laughs> now, touch the sky. I'm gonna be real. I was offended when that track came out. Why? Because Curtis Mayfield, Move On Up, is one of my favourite tracks of all time. And I was like, how <laughs> fucking dare Kanye and Just Blaze touch that track? How dare they? Yeah. We can swear on this podcast. Okay, right? okay, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> I've marked it as explicit. <laughs> so Apologise to anyone. Yeah. No. Um, but Touch the Sky, really, I was like, damn, how dare they touch that beat? Yeah. Yeah. Forget Touching the Sky, how dare they touch that yeah. beat? And um, and then it grew on me. It really kind of grew on me. The video, oh my God, I was watching the video. I was going to say, the, do you like the video? The I'm sure so you so funny. It like, is absolutely it's just hilarious. Yeah, but you, again, and Nia Long yeah, shows up in it. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's so You wouldn't funny. expect Pamela Anderson and Kanye in a video together. And I just love the fact that he took on this like superhero, you know, I'm going to touch, literally going to touch this guy, like and do what I need to do. And she's having a hissy fit, you know, in a little caravan. Um, so I think that gave a funny element to the whole track. You know, it's a fun track yeah. to listen to in a summer, on a summer day uh, with your friends. And yeah, that it, drew me. It's a, yeah, it's one really of my favourite tracks. It's so uplifting. Yeah. Those horns are just the most <laughs> yeah. uplifting. But yeah. that's, I, I don't know. I've always got so much affection for that original track. And then it's funny because I was Googling it one day in a fit of anger. And... Uh, <laughs> And, As you do. And actually, that track didn't do that well in America, which yeah. I was shocked about because yeah. it was such a huge mm. hit. I think mm. it was in like top five here or something like that. Yeah. But in America, this is like before I was born probably. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, and then Lupe Fiasco turns yeah. up. Yeah. And this was yeah. his first public appearance, oh, wow. actually, of any minute. I didn't like know that. Yeah, he'd done some mixtapes before and like on the underground we knew about him, but this was his first commercial appearance, Yeah. which is pretty amazing to think. And he kills that verse. Amazing. Um, yes. 
So yeah, I don't know. It won me over, put me that way. It, it's, yeah, touch the sky, I like it now. And the video is hilarious. I think I tweeted the other day that um, <laughs> I prefer Pamela Anderson from this video to any era of <laughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> oh. I've never been a Kim K fan. <laughs> Never kept up with the Kardashians. <laughs> she wasn't around around this album anyway, so she we're wasn't. all right. <laughs> yeah. No, she wasn't at all. Was no, she? no, no, not at all. Um, but yeah, like Touch the Sky for me is another great gym track. You feel good vibe. You, you just want to just put it on and just put it in the car. Yep. Yeah. Drive down, cruise down. So, yeah. Yeah. And then we get into your karaoke song. Yay. Just take my money. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Yeah. Oh, the, the the fact about this collaboration as well, the fact that he's got um, Jane Fox on it, was, that just blew me away. And again, the video as well. But we'll talk about the video after. Um, for me, again, it's just the B, and then just how he plays with his words, with the chorus, you know, with the prenup and um, chopping in and out. So for me, this is a genius track. Yeah. It is. It's, it's a very deceptively genial track. And so do you know the story about it? How no, it was... I don't. Okay, I'm so there was, there was a female rapper called Shauna, yeah. who I think she was associated with uh, Ludacris. In fact, I think she might be the one on, you know Ludacris's track, I want to look you from your head. Yeah, so yeah. she's the female oh, counterpart on okay. that, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Anyway, so he was actually creating this track for her and she passed on it. So I think he did a guest verse and she was supposed to have two verses. Oh, right? okay. And she passed on it. And he was like, okay, fine, I'm going to take it. Yeah? And, um, and then he originally had the, uh, the Ray Charles sample. So it wasn't Jamie Foxx originally. Yeah. And then I think what happened is he got convinced into getting Jamie Foxx on it or something like that. Or, or there was some sort of like uh, coincidence that brought them together. But did we know that Jamie sang at that time? Yeah, so I think Ray had already come out in 2004. Oh, okay. So Kanye just yeah. happened to sample it. Yeah. And then kind then brought, of, brought yeah. Jamie on to it. But then I think Jamie, was, no, was Jamie on, um, he was on, on the college dropout. He was on uh, Slow Jams, yeah, right? that's it. He yeah. was the singer on Slow he Jams. Was, yeah. So they'd yeah, already so worked together. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that back. And then Kanye did a lot of um, mm. Jamie Foxx's album and mm. stuff like that. So I think it was like a retrospective thing that he'd already created the track. Totally forgot Slow Jams was on college yeah. dropout. See, this is not how I don't know about yeah. that album. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so basically then, and then John Bryan came in and did a few little things to it as well. But you're right. And, and if you're talking about the actual verses, this is where he takes something from the beginning and ends and everything makes sense. Yeah, Every single literally. couplet makes sense throughout all the three mm-hmm. verses. And there are little kind of like call and response bit things like the pre You texted me the other day. <laughs> we want <are> pre <laughs> We want pre <pre-nup>. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, then the, and then the end is just one of the, well, when I saw him live, well, uh, it, there were a lot of white girls in the audience, put it that way. And um, and the, the, the <laughs> leave your ass for a white girl was just, it brought the house down. And the white girls in the audience were just like screaming. It was, it was incredible. Um, but in the context of the song, it's hilarious. And then in the context of his life, you know, he was going out with Amber Rose yeah, at the time. at the time, yeah. And ended up with Kim Kardashian. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, so it's, it's, it's a wonderful precursor to other elements of the narrative of his life mm. really so yeah. and it's just a great song it is actually i saw him live when he came on tour for was it this album um can't remember but kanye was the first uh rap artist in say so i saw live oh really so, yeah wow. so for me that was an experience because his energy live as well was, it was just pretty amazing so, yeah, we might as well get into that now. So I was no. telling you before the podcast, <laughs> yeah. basically uh, two, three days ago, I was at my parents' house clearing out old stuff because I'm dreadful. I've just left it there in boxes for oh, years. Yes, so what are we going to do with you? No, it's awful. And when I was clearing through stuff, I was like, yes, rubbish, rubbish, rubbish. <laughs> and then I found this little ticket stuff and it said Kanye West, wow. Hammersmith Apollo. That's it, yeah. And I was like, damn. That's and it's like the yeah. late registration That's tour. It, and I was like, yeah. man, this is like three days yeah. before we're recording this podcast. Yes, brilliant. Me. And um, and then it brought back a lot of memories of the concert. I have to say he was incredible. Yeah. And I think, I, think uh, I mean, it's impossible to say because I haven't seen him otherwise. So I didn't see him college drop out and I haven't seen him since. But late registration, he was just perfect. He was this the perfect mix of kind of affable and arrogant and mm. all these kind of things. He was still kind of relatable. Like, I was actually standing in the front row 
And uh, and he got down from the stage one time. He started pounding everyone. He gave me like a shoulder <laughs> hug at one point. I was like, and like now you would never get. No, that you'd never get that. Never in a month. Of but Sundays. I think now that that with, with concerts now that it's more about the props and the dances and you know like the focus isn't on the artist itself. I remember Kanye coming out there on his own, doing his shit. And then getting off stage and leaving the the crowd like, oh, I fucking, I want more, you yeah. know. So for me, it was it was wow. So you saw him at late registration yeah. tour as well. Yeah. Damn, so we both saw yeah. him. Yeah, and I didn't know you at that time, no, but no. yeah, but it was me, and then I was like, oh, I need to. I didn't. I didn't buy the t-shirt. Though. I'm so gutted. I wish I had. Um, but yeah, this album. I'm I Indian. I don't buy merchandise. <laughs> uh, my, merchandise at concerts? No, it's overpriced. No, it's overpriced. I will make it at home myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Gold Digger. So right. Gold Digger. Then we get into this series of skits. Yeah. And um, are you a fan of the skits on this album? I am, and not here and there. I, I, when I came back to it, I've been listening to it you know, since we, uh, we spoke about this, and. They're quite, they're quite heavy, actually. Yeah, the one that's we broke, we broke. Yeah. And um, I was actually listening to the um, words, and uh, yeah, I can just easily pass them. For yeah. Me. It's more about the songs, really, for me. I think it, it breaks the album up nicely, but it's kind of annoying. I think it's the mm. sort of thing that you listen to once, you think, yeah, yeah. that's okay, and then you don't really want very it Very similar as well, the skits are. Yeah, yeah very. Yeah. So for me, yeah, they didn't I don't think, yeah, most reviewers at the time, this, uh, I didn't get to review this one, but most reviewers at the time had misgivings about the skits. And, mm. Because I think the skits on College Dropout worked a lot better. Yeah. Um, but on this one, I don't know. I don't think it really served the purpose. Mm. Um, okay, it's got the college narrative, but I don't know. I just, yeah. I, when I kind of re-edited it into my own kind of CD and, and like reordered <laughs> the tracks, I got rid of it. I kept track. the wake up Mr. West <laughs> yeah. with like the Bernie Mac thing. Well, it's not actually, I think Bernie Mac passed away Bernie at this Mac, point. Yeah, he did. Yeah, and then someone kind of recreated it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got rid of the skits. Um, so what do you think about Drive Slow then? Drive Slow is a cruising track. Oh, yes. Yeah, late night, cruising down, blaring it up, you know, on the motorway. I, I love it. I love it. I love the way he says drive, uh, drive slow, homie. Yeah. Know? For me, it, it, it yeah. Loads of emotions in that track. Um, did you know that he originally wanted M.I.A.? What? That song? Really? I know. Where, where how? Where, I have no idea. I just, I just, I just, I just read about it. It's wow, crazy. Wow. Yeah, I was Does he to... have, he has somebody on, on this, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got Paul, Paul Wall yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and GLC. Yeah. Who, GLC, I think, was on Spaceships as well on, uh, it, on his yeah. first album. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, really I, I interesting in my age. Yeah, I don't know where she would have fit in yeah. unless she was literally just doing the chorus or yeah. something. I have no idea. Yeah, but he's always been a bit obsessed with MIA, and she's always been an inspiration to him. Basically, whatever she does, he will end up doing about two to three years later. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, MIA is a goddess, man. Right? She's I mean, a goddess. She, she does. is a goddess. Yes, yes can't she touch is. her. Um, okay, and then my way home my is way where home. Common comes in. Now yeah. at this point. Uh, Common's career was not in a good place actually mm. and then he signed to Good Music which is Kanye's label and this was his kind of um, rebirth not rebirth but his kind of most public reappearance in a way and because uh, B was coming out later that year and B was an amazing album that Kanye produced almost the whole thing except okay. Jay Dilla produced uh, two tracks and Common kills it on my way home amazing and he just does the whole thing he gets a track to himself effectively mm. or half a track mm. Definitely. So um, that helped generate the hype for uh, for Common's own okay. album. So that was cool. Got now, Jill's got heron in it. Yeah. Well. So it's yeah. samples. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm. Um, I think the verse is brilliant. His yeah. flow at that time was fantastic as well. The groove on um, that track as well. Yeah. Is just Common on form mm. is one of my favourite rappers ever. I have such misgivings with the way that he's chased Hollywood. I, I don't blame him for wanting to get into Hollywood because it's a lot easier than rapping. But he was one of my favourite rappers and uh, I really think it's such a shame that he kind of, he's not, I don't know. I'm going to leave it at that because I, I will go off. That's another podcast <laughs> itself, my ranting about Common. Because it's like, you know, when you're one of your favourite artists, yeah. just kind of like, I don't know. Um, okay, now next is one of your favourite mm. tracks. Crack music. Is that crack music, reader? Yeah, crack music. That little black music, reader. I just love it. Everything about it. 
it's very controversial in terms of its um, lyrics. You know, it's very political. He, he he states his views and just the metaphor of crack music and how you know it's evolved and everyone's been becoming addicted to it. You know, it's just, for me, it's just it's I just love this track so much. But for me as well, crack music at a time where you know, I was kind of feeling low. I wasn't actually a sing. I stopped music at that time. So for me to, to listen to loads of artists, I was just getting inspiration in terms of emotions, lyrics, you know, how people are portraying themselves. And for me, crack music, it had, a, it had a, more than just that political meaning for me. It's like, you know, you can become that addiction, you can involve people and how can we bring everyone together? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying like, yeah. in terms of like, um, just just the evolving around how that metaphor just moved that song. And then having game in there as well. So for me, like half like, a bar. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, he makes it for me, you know, as well. So Yeah. Mm. Game around that era was like a, yeah. a force of nature. Yeah. yeah. Like, he really yeah. was good around And that. you know his voice. Yeah. You know, yeah. when Kanye sings a chorus and then Game sings a chorus, you just know, but he just gives it that next element. And I mean, it gives Kanye a bit of street cred as well, because yeah. obviously he was like a backpack rapper, yeah. college dropout, et cetera, et cetera. He was not like some sort of drug dealing guy, mm, blah, blah, no. blah. Mm. And so calling it crap music, having Game on the track and yeah. then relating, I mean, mm. I think, you know, it ha- it's not like it hadn't been done before, that mm. kind of track, but yeah. I think he did it in a really interesting way. Yeah. And the breakdown on crap music yeah. is wow. Um, it's just, it's amazing. He turns into this, like a pastor in the pulpit. You yeah. Know? And it's just amazing. Yeah. And John Bryan's, bre- I think I think it's John Bryan does the um, the strings on it. And stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's just, wow. You just don't expect, like, I remember the first time I listened to it. Yeah. Like, my mind was blown. There was, there's actually a lyric, I'm just um, trying to remember it. Um, sometimes I feel the music is the only medicine. And that's what hit me. Like, actually, shit, I am actually missing music. This is what music is for me. It's wow. an addiction. I need it. I need it back in my life. You know? So for me, this was actually a turning point in my career. Wow. Like, you wouldn't think that, you know, no. because I'm not from a hip-hop background or... My music's more genre, like in terms of fusion of Hindi and English, DMB and all the folk um, uh, music. But hip hop is is been there for me at the times where I've needed music. Wow! Yeah. So how long did you leave the game for? I left the game. Um, so we're going back now. I got married in two thousand and four. Okay. Just before that, uh, two thousand three, I was actually part of a band. Um, and uh, but I wasn't a solo artist in my own right, but I gave it up because I'd been doing it from a young age. I'm, I'm gonna give my age away now. Um, uh, from 16, I, I was in a band, and it was an amazing time I had with them. You know, I learned so much as an artist, as a performer, live performer. Um, but it just got came to a point in my life where I just wanted some not time out, but just some because at the time I was in this band. I was uh, singing, working, studying. So everything was full on for me. So then I gave it up around 2002, 2003. And then uh, I came back 2006 through MySpace, connecting with somebody. Oh, wow. Yeah. So for me, music has always been part of my life, whether it's um, listening to hip hop, you know, listening to my trance or DMB, but... If I had my choice of what to listen to in the house, uh, hubby wouldn't like it, but it would be <laughs> hip hop. <laughs> be like, what shit you're playing on now? It's eight o'clock in the morning. I'm yeah, you know, just oh about away. Oh my god, my wife yes. is exactly the same. <laughs> oh god, I don't care. Whatever she, time it is, if I want to listen to Kanye, Gold Digger Eight, I will listen to Gold Digger at Eight o'clock all around the house. Do you know what really stops that is having kids? Because <laughs> yeah, I used to, I used to just put it on. I used to leave. I, do you know what? I actually used to leave um, whatever my favorite album was yeah. of the day at yeah. night and leave it on the sleep timer and fall asleep. Wow. To it. Okay. And I used to piss my wife off <laughs> so much. Yeah, she used to tell, complain to random strangers. Oh my god, blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> and, then, and then since I've had kids, no. Uh, <laughs> and the thing is, like, it's either in the headphones or in the car, and oh, they're not in the car. And it's yeah, like, it's yeah. Like, okay. Mm. So, but it's fine. I have to fight for my time with hip hop a bit more, but yeah. then that makes me love it a bit yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. So. Okay, so, yeah. so um, next up is roses. Now, 
In fact, Roses and Bring Me Down, that kind of one-two punch, I was always a little bit ambivalent about those at the why, time. Why would you say that? <sighs> Roses seemed very melodramatic and kind of overblown, but mm. then it kind of grew on me. Mm. Bring Me Down, I'm still really not a fan of that track, mm. to be honest. I was, I was a fan of Brandy. I wasn't an obsessive like loads of people yeah. were. Loads of Asian girls my age I were just love obsessed. With, okay, I love Brandy. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> um, I love Brandy. And then just emotion that she shows in her her voice as well um but to have her but we'll get onto that song in a minute no it's okay you can cover it now. oh okay um for me bring me down and roses yeah you you are right they are very melodramatic but you're seeing another side to kanye again you know his softer side he's trying to like for, for the audience to empathize with him in terms of his the situations like with roses you know it's about someone meeting someone in in hospital but yet the nurse wants his signature you know what <laughs> sign kind a of t-shirt yeah. yeah she on refo you know what <laughs> I mean like you're saying stuff like that so for me it was great to see Kanye show that side to him yeah I think roses. roses roses for me was one of those tracks I guess if you haven't really been there before yeah. then, Again, then actually, it might be difficult to relate to that, I, I know, totally so that right. was in 2005 so, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, it's like yeah. 2008 that yeah. my own grandfather got ill yeah. and then I had to help him loads through it yeah. and stuff and then he ended up being okay mm. but um so then once I listened to it after that I was like okay I can relate to this track a lot mm. more I think Rose is a good track mm. it just took a while for, to grow on me um, and like you write the verse on it, isn't it? Yeah, the verse on it, even the chorus, you know, he's like, I can't wait for a sunny day. Mm. It, just the metaphors, you know, you can relate to it if you're thinking about somebody and just if they're down or depressed or it, it, it's an emotion for me. Yeah, and I think interesting thing about this one is him and John Bryan had a big argument about this track. Oh, okay. And uh, I think the original composition was different. And Kanye basically changed it, and um, for his own verses, basically, there's hardly any there's, instrumentation. There's no, there's no instruments, yeah. But then he brought all the instrumentation yeah. to the chorus, and yeah. John Brown, he didn't tell John Brown. Oh. <laughs> so just, but then do you uh, think that gives an impact? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and John Brown like said, I was really yeah. pissed off, but he was right. <laughs> yeah. And he, I think he said it, it was like when Prince took out the bass line for When Doves Cry or something like that. <gasps> did that's, you know? Yeah, that was the, oh, that's one of my favourite tracks. Oh, yeah, that's one of my yeah, favourite yeah. tracks yeah. ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Roses has definitely grown on me. Bring Me Down, I'm still to this day, it's what I would just skip it, to be yeah. honest. And mm-hmm. I get that you're a Brandy fan, as is every Asian girl I know well, who's this well, age. Well, we're the Bring Me Down as well. It's the strings. Yeah. Bring Me Down. I, I, the funny thing is, I don't mind his verses, because actually, this is a, one of the first times we hear really kind of... It's not just arrogant Kanye, it's pissed off Kanye. Yeah, it's pissed off, because yeah. Up right. until that point, he'd been so... And, and not just through mm. college dropout, but obviously he'd been in the limelight for a while because he'd been producing, you know, the yeah. blueprint and then all that kind of stuff for like three, four years by this point. Mm. He was so chummy, chummy with everyone. He was so polite. He never got into beefs with anyone. And actually, this is one of the first times you hear him just be really pissed off. And, and it's quite a revelation. And that's what I like about it. I, I'm not a big fan of the beat or Brandy's contribution, but mm. the verses I, I do like yeah. on it. And it's... That's one of the things, kind of, now you hear him, like, just constantly complaining about everything. And, like, <laughs> I think by this stage, he'd already ruined one awards ceremony, which he, he kind of referenced. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was good to hear him kind of pissed off. Yeah. So that was cool. For that, it was, uh, yeah, the emotion that he was showing through these two tracks. Uh, you yeah. could connect to him as, as a person. Yeah. Not as an artist, but as a person. When you were talking about crap music and you referenced that music was your addiction... We come up to track 11, which is... Oh, my God. This is one of my favourite songs on the album. For sure. Addiction. <gasps> yes. Amazing. Addiction. It's just amazing. It's from a... No- you know, actually, crack music and addiction. This is what I'm saying. When I re-edited it, yeah. I put those two together. Yeah. It makes so much yeah. more sense. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think everything made sense in the track listing on this album. I know it's a messy kind of yeah. genial masterpiece, mm, mm. but I would have preferred a slightly different track yeah, listing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so what did you think about Addiction? <gasps> addiction. I don't know why is everything supposed to be bad? Make me feel so good. You oh. know, it's so, it's so true. So is that, true. The, 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 just the way that he, you know, I mean, he, he's talk, obviously he's talking about a mistress and, and how he like does whatever he does with her. <laughs> but um, it, it's like wow, you know, you, you're you're telling her to do this, you're telling her to do, and she's even feeling it because she's you know she's feeling vulnerable, and so for me that was like wow. 
It's a really Great. complex track. It's a it? very complex track. The thing is, it's kind of like, it's a very brutally simple track, the way that it's yeah. kind of constructed. Yeah. But then there's a lot of additional complexities to it. Yeah. Musically, it's brilliant. I think it's, yeah. I think it's John Bryan's best moment yeah. on the album, yeah. actually, in a way. But even like the, the opening line of what he says, what's your addiction? Yeah. Is it money? Is it, is it girls? girls? Is it weed? Mm. You can't think of any like other addiction, really, yeah. can you? Chucking gambling, and that's pretty Yeah, cool. yeah. It's like, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, and then even the outro is really cheeky. It's, it's so cheeky. It's, it's, see, I just rolled my eyes. You didn't see that, obviously, no. the podcast. <laughs> but I, I rolled my eyes. Uh, but that's exactly what Kanye is like. On this, you're like you compliment him one millisecond later. Yeah. You're rolling your eyes. Yeah. And it's just. Yeah. But that's the genius of this album. It kind but of with this, you this track, you know, he's going into having a full blown affair with you know someone, or you know she's cheating on her man. But then next minute, this outro is asking uh, you. Know, like, asking her for something else so he wants to cheat on her as well so it's like what what's going on there you know shaking my head <laughs> rolling his eyes <laughs> <laughs> um, i just wanted to ask you <laughs> <laughs> unless you're gonna do it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah but i remember even in the concert he started he, he well, did he do that i can't remember no, no, this. i don't know if he did the song i, I can't, I can't yeah. remember but he, he was doing this monologue about being addicted to porn. Oh, really? <laughs> I think he did do this song. Oh, okay. And it was okay. really funny. Everyone was just cracking up. Yeah. And it was just hilarious. Yeah. He was just was such a great showman, yeah. actually, at yeah. that time. I wonder what it, what it was like when he was actually writing these tracks. You know, like we, we've spoken about that, how different each track is. It'd be amazing just to be a fly on the wall, just like watching. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're right. I mean, the tracks are so different on this mm. album. And which is a pretty difficult thing. You know, there's a good mm. kind of, what, 16, 17 songs, right. full-length songs. Some of yeah. them are really long. Yeah. And and each takes a different topic, it pretty much. A different and angle. it doesn't even really retread much from the college dropout. No. So I think, like, between those albums, you, you've got basically, like, what? Probably about two and a half hours of music released within two years of each other. And it doesn't really retread the same steps. It's quite interesting. It I think interesting. how he does it is pretty amazing. Mm. There's a lot of scope. And... People, it's funny because the record labels were confused because he wasn't a drug dealing, blah, 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 or, you know, all that kind of stuff that they were trying to sign. But actually being the outsider was his greatest strength because yeah. it, it made him normal to people like you and I. We mm-hmm. could relate to mm-hmm. him. And, and that opened up, you know, when he's talking about the crack music thing, he's talking about his grandmother. He talks about his grandfather. He yeah. talks about on the next track, he talks about Diamonds from Sierra Leone. Yeah. Mm. And then his mother, yeah, this, diamonds, that. This is just yeah. so many different topics mm. that he covers, mm. um, which is a real Do you think strength. this is more personal to Kanye? I think his first two albums are incredibly personal. Mm. I think after that, it gets less personal. Yeah. I think from graduation onwards. It was well, funny, actually. So today I had to do a lot of driving around. And once I finished listening to this again for like the 10th <laughs> time, um, I was like, let me just go through the rest of his stuff. Not college dropout, but everything after this. So I was kind of skimming through graduation and I was kind of like, I was never the biggest fan of Graduation. No. I think it's, a good, it's a good, solid album with some mm. great songs on it, mm. but there is some clunky stuff yeah. on there, which I didn't mm. like. Um, 808s and Heartbreak, I never took to that album. It was a track. I yeah, know. I never took to it. I know some people who did, and who think, oh yeah, it revolutionised everything, but in reality, I don't think it did. He was building on other things. Mm. But I get that he had to do it because his mother died. That's fine. Mm. Um my Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, amazing album. I think it's, it's, it's almost perfect, except maybe the end, end part of it. Um, but again, it's not as relatable as something like the re- Late Registration or College Dropout. Yeah. I think it's very clinically, brilliantly put together. Mm. Um, then after that, you're going into, what, Yeezus. I'm going to ignore Watch the Throne. Uh, Yeezus. <laughs> Yeezus was massively overhyped and massively damned. Uh, it was kind of like one of these things that was bizarre. People like, it, it was such a Marmite album. It was amazing. Uh, I just thought it was a good, solid album, basically. And then you've got <laughs> The Life of Pablo, well. which could have been incredible, <laughs> but I think he just messed with it too much. Yeah. The original incarnation of it, 11 tracks, brilliant. And then he just messed with it and messed with it and messed with it. And I listened to that today and I was like, damn, he just it could have been so good. It's mm-hmm. actually really interesting as a patchwork like, of musical ideas. Um, but I don't know. And then it kind of reinforced, it's like, I think Late Registration might be his best album, maybe. There's, there's certainly a strong case for it. Mm. And then you've got something like the next track, Diamonds from Sierra Leone mm. Remix, mm. featuring... Wonder Day Chica <laughs> Chica. Chica. Who was officially in retirement at this point, right? 
Oh. He was about halfway through his retirement. Really? Yeah. We didn't know it was halfway. I didn't we know suspected that. it would yeah. be because we always thought he'd he'd come back. But um, yeah. So, um, do you remember this? Of course. Oh my lord! I'm not Shall a businessman. I'm not a businessman. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, this, this track, the way that they, he samples Shirley Bassey. Kanye again, Shirley Bassey and Kanye West. You wouldn't expect that, but even just the the twist on how he he samples Shirley. And how he brings Jay Z in. Again, it's a very controversial topic talking about uh, you know, diamonds, Sierra Leone, the blood diamonds. Um, but it flows. I think it I mean, I'm going to talk about the, the original version as well, mm. which is included as a bonus track. Yes, yes, it is. So it's funny, whenever I think of diamonds, I think of this Jay Z remix. And but I was listening to the original version mm. and I was like uh, on repeat and then watched the video for it and stuff. And I think it might be one of the best videos he's ever done. He had Hype Williams direct it. Yeah. It's this kind of brand of this pompous orchestration. It's set in Prague. The flow on the original, Kanye's flow is damn good. That might yeah. be one of his best rapping examples ever. And and you're right, the, the Shirley Bassey sample, the diamonds. Like On that one, he's talking about, on the original, he's talking about Rockefeller and diamonds, yeah. but yeah. I'll throw mm. your diamonds in the sky mm-hmm. if you will. But, and then, and then he flips it to actually the Blood Diamond because that Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. film was so yeah, big at the time. Yeah, it was at the stuff. time. Yeah. Mm. And and then Jay Z's re- oh my god, Jay Z's verse on this is really good. Yeah. It absolutely shook. I think Kanye was a bit shocked, basically. Yeah. yeah. It, you know. Mm. And um, it's the, the way he comes in. Well. Yeah. 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 So it. actually, the way even the way that from a technical, I'm going to get geeky on mm. the raps of raps. So basically, he does Kanye does. I think a little bit of a clunky verse. Like, it, the sentiment is good, but it, it's not the best verse. And then he brings, after the chorus, he resamples the original yeah. verse and then cuts it short and then Jay-Z comes, comes in. Comes in. Yeah. I got it from here. Yeah. 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 yeah and, then, and then just kills it. He just cold kills it. Mm. Absolutely. And, uh, and then the next song features Nas. Now, at this time, Jay-Z and Nas were not the best of mm. friends. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. So having them on the same album, now he actually recorded Nas in secret, so Jay didn't know about oh. it. Yeah, which is pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think We Major might be my favourite song from this album. Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah. I kind of flip, what, are you, what are you flipping with? Addiction? No, and... yeah, this Addiction and uh, and Gone. I actually love, love Gone. I love Gone. It's such a track. I love it. There's something about it. It's, we'll get to it later. Yeah, but, um, yeah. I'd probably say I think those are my top three from it. Um, but We Major, oh, it's just that if you're talking about this album being an exercise in excess, mm. then We Major is the centre point of it. I mean, it's like, it, well, it's a good five minutes and then he comes yeah, back is. and then talks shit. Can I talk my shit <laughs> yeah, yeah. at the end for two minutes and then stuff? And then the chorus on it is practically 16 bars. It is. You know? I think it, I think it basically it's effectively twelve bars and then we made it. Come on, home we made it. And it's but like that is a, and then that comes in three times. The whole thing is just like wow, it's just so excessive and I love it. It's just like so over the top and 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 it's it's Kanye at this point where he's just expanding into this larger than life figure. <laughs> yeah. and, and I just love it. I absolutely love. It. But yeah, he's music, still not he's still yeah. not a complete dick yet, basically. <laughs> Right, and, and he's still kind of affable, and even his his verse is clever. You know, he's being a dick, and then he he prefaces it with, you know, until you have a daughter, uh, and then like kind of you know, and he ends up having a daughter mm. again. You know, so. Um, but even the music on this, oh. is so like OTT, oh, isn't it? It's just so the trumpets are just so Feeling OTT. Better than I ever felt before <laughs> today. I, it's just it's so uplifting. It's just so corny and cheesy and brilliant. I just oh. We major. Come on, oh, we major. <laughs> and Nas, my God, Nas yeah, is my favorite Nas, rapper of all yeah. time. So like, and, and I think he actually, people were kind of hyper analyzing his verse at the time, but but I still think it's great. And I think I think Jay Z's um, "I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman" is an amazing line. Mm. And Nas has an amazing line, which is uh, uh, what are, I'm, I'm Jesse Jackson on the balcony when King got killed, yeah. which just is one of those. You just you're like, what did he just what say? What did he just say? And then yeah. you take the context of him being around with Biggie and Pac. I was just yeah. like, wow, yeah. and even Big L, and mm. it's just crazy. Mm. Oh, I love that song, nuts. Um, okay, let me go into stupid skit and then Hey Mama. Hey Mama. 
Oh. Well, I like this track because just see the love that he had and it's quite bittersweet really what you know obviously what happened um to his mother and it's really it's bittersweet sad. it's just completely sad um so you, you can hear all the love and you know what he did everything for his mom and uh you can't help but feel that when you think about your own you know like whoever you're close to like maternally so for me that i always think about my mommy when i hear that track yeah i mean to be perfectly honest, I never really liked that track. Like, I thought it was okay, it was fine. I thought it was corny. Yeah, it's corny. But but then, you know, but then, how many songs about mothers are yeah. not corny? Yeah, you know? like, it's true. It's probably Puck is the only one who yeah. ever got away with it. Yeah. You know, and, um, but, but then the funny thing is, at the concert, this song went down a storm, yeah. absolute storm. And I always have this nice little memory from it. So, so I, I tend to skip this track, if I'm honest. But, like, I always have a nice memory from it at the concert. Everyone was going crazy and then he kind of died down the beat and then he was getting everyone to sing along. And actually Kanye's voice, so he was just singing a cappella, yeah. Well, pretty much a cappella. And, and he has got a really good singing voice. He has actually got And this is what voice. pissed me off about 808s and Heartbreak. I was kind of like, actually, he doesn't, he didn't, didn't need, need all, all that, that auto tuning. Yeah. Didn't. I wrote this that in the review. Did I was you? Like, yeah. Um, uh, that's why I couldn't connect to that album because there's so much auto tuning. Yeah. And I think, okay, I can, I can understand on that album, completely random, sorry, we're going off on my, but <laughs> I can understand using auto-tune as an instrument to convey yeah. emotional distress. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. But he's got a good singing voice yeah. and he could have just actually sung a lot more of the songs. Mm. Yeah. And uh, without, without the benefit of that, I don't know, it's just a shame. And I, I'd literally heard him sing live and he's a good singer. Yeah. You know, he is a good singer. He's yeah. not like incredible, but he's yeah. perfectly good. I think it's just how the artist probably wants to portray themselves out to the audience. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, we'll never know what's going on. I don't think ever, anyone will ever know what's going on in Kanye's head, but maybe it was just the way he wanted to just put it out there. But, you know, coming back to his voice, he has, even live, amazing, amazing singer, actually. Yeah. I think he's, he can hold a key. Yeah, that, no, he was really, sure, especially yeah. back then. I yeah. mean, you know, he was mm. really good. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was a great live track. Uh, I... I I always tend to skip it, but that's just my personal opinion, <laughs> to be honest. It's not a bad song or anything. Yeah, if you it's want one a bad of those song, in the background kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, if you want a bad song, the next song <laughs> is bad. Celebration. Yes. It's just bad. I think it's just a bad song, yeah. to be honest. Um, <laughs> that's all I've got to say. <laughs> my God, it's so... No, it's just so... Oh, really? It's just so corny, and it's just... The, the, oh my god, like, this is pre-iPhone era, but it sounded like this had been made on an iPhone, yeah. It did! And it's just, it's just ridiculous, okay. ridiculous verses, stupid chorus, corny beat. I can't, can't even remember it, to it. be honest. Good. It's I'm jealous of you. <laughs> I wish that like, someone would come and men and black me with one of those devices, so they just wipe this thing out of my memory. Uh, that's funny. Dreadful song. Yeah. Anyway, moving on, I guess. Yeah. Uh, after that stupid what skit and then skit. we get into um, the closing sequence yeah. of three songs mm. um, so actually I think Gone is Gone. actually the last yeah. official track and then, and then after that it's a couple of bonus tracks yeah. um, Gone is one of my favourite songs on the whole album and um, it, it's just it's just such a, uh, it's such a brut brutally simplistic beat yeah. with the percussion it's yeah. literally just a drum machine going dun, dun, and then John Bryan brings in all these strings and I remember I read that he actually convinced Kanye to have different strings on each verse right so each rapper gets a different set of strings and then Kanye comes back again with another different set of strings and it's so subtle it's one of my favourite songs I remember trying to recreate this as a producer like an, yeah. or sort of interpolate it into my own yeah. production brilliant it's just genius um, the flow on this is the is flow nice. on this is brilliant, yeah, amazing. With all, with all the rap artists out on it, yeah, yeah, like Kanye's good mm. on it. Mm. Um, Cameron, it, yeah, Cameron mm. is brilliant. Consequence is really yeah. good in this. Actually, there's let me geek out a little bit. There was a track called "The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly" that was supposed to make the college dropout, but it never did. That was Kanye and Consequence. It was one of the best songs he ever did. It was amazing, but I can understand why it didn't quite make the college dropout. But it's still, this kind of reminds me of that song a bit because it's Consequence again. They were really tight and they kind of rapped like each other. I think he helped with the writing. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, brilliant. Awesome. Um, then we come to, well, we've got, I guess you've got the UK version as well, right? Mm. So there's actually like 
what diamonds diamonds, diamonds. the original track yeah and then there's late late and then there's we can make it better Although it's kind of actually well we can make it better and then late was the uk kind of way around um so diamonds the original is amazing as i was kind of referencing before i, I actually think it's so underrated like i think when he did it live it just brought the house down it absolutely mm. brought the house down have you actually heard the uh Live version. Do late you mean late late orchestration? No. <laughs> no. No. I was hoping you, you had that you could tell me. Are yeah, I know. Crazy? I don't know how this bypassed me. No, actually, I wouldn't have known about it only because I got Spotify. So I was coming across there was a, there was a day that I just want you know when you just want to hear a track and I was like shit where is it and yeah. I found it and then I'm like actually this isn't the version I was looking for and I find this album late orchestration and it's got this phenomenal track you know the strings that he has on the, the version original version imagine that life so what are you talk, you're still talking about gone no i'm talking about uh oh diamonds diamonds oh really wow diamonds. yeah i've never listened see so again back then we didn't have all these streaming services no, we didn't. No. um now we do but obviously, but like back then I was DJing a lot, so my money had to go to vinyl and stuff like that. So I didn't always have time for late orchestration. Um, now I'm definitely going to check it out. I was hoping you checked it out, actually. It's, it's so how, what's it like as a general? It's of, great. Yeah. You, know, you just got that live feeling that you're there. And, so, and, so and did it, you do all the tracks? From, I can't remember if he does all the tracks. I haven't heard it all through. Okay. Um, but I always just go to this one because it's in one of my playlists. And... I think it was done in front of an audience. I haven't researched into it, but it was done in front of an audience and there's a point where the audience are like screaming and clapping and it just gives you that wow, the wow factor. Wow. To this track. It's phenomenal as it is. So just to hear that live, recorded live. I think he got the inspiration from Portishead because I think their 1998 yes, album. They, yes. Because John Bryan produced that as well. Oh, or, or produced elements of it, I yeah. think. And, and they did a live version as well. Yeah. So um, so I guess, yeah, he redid yeah, that, which was really done, clever, actually. Yeah. yeah. It was done here, actually, in London, I think. What, Portishead's um, one? Uh, the, or late orchestration. Oh, okay. Late, really? I don't know if it was, it was actually done at Abbey Road. So it How wasn't, amazing. So it wasn't a live audience... I think he had a live audience there. Oh, wow. Mm. Oh, yeah, I guess, yeah. You'll need to, actually, you'll need to listen to, to have, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it was like one live renditions. Oh. Just having a look at that. Yeah, in 2006, that came out. Wow. And he'd done all the tracks. All the main ones, well, he'd done crack music. Done Through the Wire. Wow. So that's something else that you can check out. That kind of, yeah. And Gone, your track. Gone. Mm. Okay, so then we've done pretty much all of them. Except for late, and we can make it better. Um, do you remember those? Okay, so yeah, because those those were on the UK edition, the bonus version. So late was uh, late was actually a really lush track with that kind of chipmunk soul sped up oh, sample. Okay. So it kind of combined the old Kanye with yeah. the new Kanye and John Bryan, yeah. and it's actually really it's 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 a, a very catchy song. It mm. goes. Ha 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 ha! And then, yes, I do you remember I that? Have, yeah, yeah. yeah, I have heard it. Yeah. And then we can make it better. Is is again along those kind of chipmunk chipmunk soul um, mm-hmm. kind of joint. And it's got like Talib Kweli on it, Q-Tip, Common, Rhymefest, Rhymefest. Uh, Brian Rhymefest is is one of the guys who wrote like a lot of Kanye's best stuff, okay. like especially early on. Like he wrote All Falls Down and Jesus Walks. I say Ryan first wrote it because he fucking did. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye might have adapted a couple of elements, but really it's like 80% at least Ryan first. That guy's a genius. Um, but yeah, so so it's a long album. It's definitely a long album. I mean, it clocks in at like, what, 74 odd minutes or at least yeah. 70 for like the normal long. version. It's long. Um, but it keeps you going. Yeah, it really just, yeah. It's funny because it's one of those ones. I think he even described it. He said, This is like music to clean your house to. <laughs> Right? Well, I think I have. I, like, I literally <laughs> did that the other day. I just left it on. I was cleaning the house. I was like, damn, this really does work. Yeah. So It's one of those albums you can just have in the background as well. And yeah. and then if you recognize the track, you're like, oh, gold digger. And then, yeah, you just sing along with it and then go back to what you, you're doing. So. And it's got a nice kind of uniform feel, feel to it, mm. like in terms of 
even though every track is different, yeah. it all sounds consistent on the same yeah. on the same album. It's like it's you're going difficult. through this journey yeah. with him, right? Yeah. And but you're feeling all the emotions. This is this is why I was drawn when you asked me well, one of my favorite albums. I had to. It had to be one of these, uh, like Kanye's um, uh, late registration, because it's just the way it flows. Yeah. It's like you're just going on a journey with him, and then he's gone through one community, one going through to see his friends, and then he's with his mom, and you know, it's it's just. I think it, it relies on the music to tell the story as opposed to yeah. kind of tricking you with... Yeah. Like, I think College Dropout was very tightly sequenced together and, and it kind of led you by the hand, whereas this just chucks the music mm-hmm. out there and it lets you figure it out mm. yourself, which is more of a grown-up way yeah. of doing it, isn't yeah. it, to be honest? Okay, it has some stupid skits and stuff like that, but and then he transitions away from that from, yeah. from after... This is yeah. the last time he has any skits, I think, yeah. until like, Life of Pablo. Life of Pablo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, this, the, I don't know. It's just a really intoxicating mix of humor, of great technical prowess, of beautiful music, of brutal music, brutal, of, yeah, yeah, of great honest. singles, yeah, mm. a real kind of, yeah. Oh my god, it's honest. Like, it, it really <laughs> is cut, cut you open, yeah. bleed honesty yeah. thing. But it has the singles again, and mm. I think the thing that made me sad today was kind of not just about Kanye, but about hip hop in general is that around this era and, and like the previous kind of, especially five to 10 years, hip hop albums would still adhere to having like at least two to four big singles. And on this, he really does, you know, he has diamonds, he has gold digger, um, you know, touch the sky with that video. It's brilliant. Heard him say was a single as well. And that was a pretty big single. Mm. You've got four big singles and then college dropout had like God knows how many, Mm. Graduation had big singles as well. Can't Tell Me Nothing, Stronger. Mm. Um, you know, it had these big singles. And, and nowadays, just albums don't anymore. Like, it's like, I'm all for artistry and really delving into it, absolutely. But it's just, sometimes it'd be nice for, like, bigger artists to have big singles. You know, it's just, I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's just a shame because Kanye is someone who's capable of it as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, he was yeah, knocking these out in his sleep. He was, I mean, yeah. You know. The flow was there, as I said. He learnt from college dropout the formula that really worked for him, and and it worked definitely worked because till this day we're still talking about it. Yeah, and to be honest, we've had to cap this at like an hour, but we could easily just spe- <laughs> we could we, we've that probably true. skimmed the surface of this album <laughs> in a lot of ways, and you know, um, but it, it's one of these albums that you could talk about like times infinity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there'll always be something to talk about. Yeah. And then the more stupid shit Kanye does, the more you the more come you to this come album. Back to it. Actually, yeah. there was a point where... Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, okay, well, I think that pretty much wraps up late registration. Yes. Unless you've got anything else to add. No, I just, it's just been you know, a pleasure chatting about it. It's not often as a singer you get to talk about what you love and um, how it influences you. So thank, thank you for having me here. Thank you for being on the Transatlantic Rebels podcast. Now, this is the part where you get to do your shameless self-promotion. Yay. Yay. So, um, my music, yeah, it's, it's coming back and forth. Um, as I said, uh, I, I, I've been singing a lot of um, DMB, um, but I've got my own tracks coming out. Just had a track come out last year, um, let me know, which was a fusion of like uh, drum and bass, soft drum and bass, but... This year, I hope to um, bring out more um, in what I do, um, more live performances. So you can catch me on readtomorrow.com. Uh, follow me uh, at readtomorrowuk and then get to know me. And come and say hi and I'll say hi back to you. And you can even tell me what your favourite Kanye track is and I won't, I won't bring up crap music or addiction, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, well... That has been a very special live version of the Transatlantic Rebels podcast with our special guest, Rita Mora. And we were covering Kanye. And uh, yeah, that was really good fun. And it would be brilliant to have you back one day. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Got my next albums lined up, don't worry. Yeah? (laughs) Okay, awesome. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. And peace. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week's Transatlantic Rebels podcast. My name is Jessel, and this week we've got a very special guest. Her name is Rita Morar, <laughs> and she's 